Welcome back to Unraveled Game Thoughts, and I have before me today Darwin's Journey, the Euro game. Uh, I don't even know how to introduce this really, but this was a, I want to say this came out in, I don't know if it was this year or the end of last year, but a friend of mine, uh, a couple of friends let me borrow this. Thank you, Caleb and Cassie, for letting me borrow Darwin's Journey. And I thought I would take a stab at, I'm going to say, starting the solo journey. I'm not sure if I'll finish. Uh, I have a um, limited time frame right now. But while it's up on my table and while I'm thinking about it and have peruse through these rules a few times I figured I will take a shot and at least introduce the game give you an idea of how the solo plays and a lot of the solo aspects are fairly similar to the um, multiplayer aspects the actions as far as what they do and how they operate are very similar so I have my rule book here I may or may not reference it. If I really have to, I will. But my goal is to give you a flavor of the game because there's a lot of really good how-to tutorial videos out there for Darwin's Journey. My goal here is to just kind of give you enough of a flavor that if you are thinking about this game, then uh, maybe this will help you make a decision one way or the other. And if it wasn't even on your radar, then you'll have some ideas of this uh, this game and what it does and how it works and if you uh, might be interested so for the solo setup um, there's a decent amount of setup for this game but I think after I'd done it once I'd probably I, I could probably set it up pretty fast if I got used to setting it up so I don't know that the first setup is actually a good um, what do you call it uh, not a good example of a normal setup for this game because I think once you kind of know where everything goes, it'd pretty, 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 be pretty fast. Now, my board is down here, and I'm kind of hoping you can see, hopefully over my headset and head to down here. In fact, I might be able to move a couple of these things up. We have the coins. We have these, like, research. These are knowledge tokens. we got these research tokens. And I'll just slide these up. And these cards represent... Uh, additional actions that the AI will take when they reach certain points. This is basically a loop up here for the AI to take different actions and they kind of do everything like a normal player for the most part so they just mimic that player interaction. So we're going to draw a card for the AI each, uh, uh, each round until he's used all his workers and then we'll I'll take my turn. So AI goes first every time and then I take my turn back and forth basically four actions up until potentially if I get my fifth worker I could have an extra action but don't get the fifth worker I won't have an extra action uh, I think the AI only ever gets four I don't think he ever gets a fifth worker um, judging by the fact that his worker is up here um, which could have been I think that's where they told me to put it so I'm gonna trust that I read the rules correctly earlier uh, I'm starting with four coins a what do you call it uh, knowledge token which can be used in place of wax seals which I'll explain in a bit and the so that's my board down here they kind of look connected but they're just touching each other um, and the AI board above and a place for me to obtain objectives during the game that will score me points at the end of the game and then I have a wax seal section to build up my wax seals and I've got a museum section to indicate what I have studied or not studied in a museum, some stamps, some tents. Uh, over here we have the journals, so they're kind of like, that's one journal right here, two journals, uh, three journal, uh, four uh, action space here. This is just where we gather stamps. We have, we can get our wax seals up here, we can get objectives from here, uh, add to the museum here, and then there's just like a journey track down here where Darwin is 
you know, he's, you, you're sending explorers out from various ships to explore the specimens on these islands. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The, uh, I mean, the, the premise of the game is to score victory points. It's a Euro game. Um, it's uh, the theme. I don't know. You can judge for yourself how much you think the theme is really uh, tied in with the mechanics. But my impression, after reading the rules, is only the tattest amount. Uh, I don't think it's ser significantly tied to mechanics. Uh, a lot of games aren't, so that doesn't necessarily make it a bad game or anything. It's just that's just my perception from the rules. So. Uh, we do have a knowledge track here that's going to give us some bonus scoring at the end of the game if we get that far, which we may or may not get. Uh, these are some extra cards over here that I just left over there. I have three crew cards, which are kind of almost like objectives in and of themselves. I want to obtain certain criteria, and then as a free action, I can get the action on these crew cards. So that's pretty much the two minute overview of the game board things. We got a victory point track here. Uh, up to 50 points. And there we go. So let's just jump in and I'll kind of explain things as I go and hopefully that uh, will uh, give you enough flavor to work with. So the first thing I do is I draw a card for the solo and uh, it's got essentially three types of actions and I just start at the top and the goal is to have the AI take an available action and I believe he starts at the top but there's sometimes there's some like little caveats and I will actually reference the rule books here because I think right out of the gate here I feel like that top action that's listed here is one that he actually doesn't take very often for some reason or another um, not understanding the full scope of the game beyond the rules, I you know there's definitely a an aspect of it that I'm not really sure why they would do certain things a certain way, but I'm guessing they're they're more important for one reason or another. Um, so it's this eyeglass action and navigation exploration. I know it has to do with oh small diary. So Alfred only sends a worker to a small diary location to perform an unlock action when there are no other workers on the small diary. Oh, okay. So he just won't go there un unless he's the only one there. But he will go there otherwise. All right. So, so I'm guessing that's what he's going to do. Uh, and he can use any worker. So I'm going to assume he uses his top worker. There's not really... Well, it says B worker. That's for the journal action, though. So I don't think he prioritizes. I think he just goes top to bottom, unless otherwise indicated. And I'll lay them down so you can see them on the overhead camera a little bit more. But he goes there, and he gets an unlock to unlock an action. And basically, some of these actions here don't have... Um, they don't have action spaces yet we have to unlock them and now with Alfred my concern is I don't think I uh, I don't recall reading how he prioritizes what space he wants to unlock that's that is a catch okay he chooses a small diary location the bottom most available worker is moved to either unlock lens space on the diary so I move the top I'm supposed to move the bottom I'll do that. And the topmost locked location that has wax seal requirements that their topmost worker can satisfy and where Alfred is able to pay any associated coin penalty. So he wants to unlock uh, something that this top worker can satisfy and that's going to be these two yellow there. He can satisfy that. So he's basically using his bottom worker to unlock something for a top worker. I see. Okay. Yeah. So there are quite a few priority things on here. So I may just gravitate toward giving, you know, that that 
logic makes sense, so I might just try to apply that logic in a general sense and hope that it works reasonably well for the purposes of just demonstrating the game but not getting too caught up in the weeds. So that's his turn. He does that. He is done. Um, and I will have to look at his rest action because I can't remember what he does. But he just does that, and he's not moving his guy forward or anything like that here. He didn't pay. He didn't have to pay any money. Oh, did he have to pay money? He sure did. He needed to pay four coins. So this is how he pays coins. One, two, three, four. And if he takes a rest action, I believe his rest action is he gets to move, he gets he gets some coins and he gets to move his worker. I just can't. I was kind of hoping it would be just on the board, an obvious rest action option here, but I don't see it. So I'll have to look it up when I get there. He gets some number of coins and gets to move his worker up top some number of spaces, but we'll see. All right, so it's my turn. Um, now, if I go to a place where another player already has placed something, I have to pay a three-coin penalty to go to the same spot. So generally, I'm going to want to go to a different spot, and all I have are these workers here. Uh, ideally, I think I'd kind of like to get wax seals, and I am kind of going for these these guys here. Uh, I want to build my way up to them so that I can use their uh, their abilities. So that takes three and two. So getting a blue wax seal would not be bad. Um, so I think I'm going to use my yellow worker. I'm going to go here. Not my yellow worker. Well, yeah, he's got a wax seal. So the catch on this game, I don't have to pay anything for this one, this top row, is cost no money. It would cost me coins to go to these rows and get a seal. But right now, I can just get a seal. And the way this works is, I didn't want this one, I want the blue one. Um, you you have, you have uh, your workers, each worker is associated with a seal or seals. The first one is just a purple seal, so that's just kind of like an anything seal. Uh, and then the second one, there are six slots, third one and the fourth one, there are six slots. and the seal power, the kinds of seals can determine certain actions you take on the board. So there required no seals. I was going to get a seal. This one requires, uh, this requires one green to go to this any number of players action. Uh, one blue, one yellow, one red. So if you just have the basic colors, then you got those. But like I can't go to this red because I have no red seal. So I got to get a red seal before I can even do that. And actually, you know what? It'd probably be better for me to get that blue one later and get the red one now because then I at least have a red seal. So I'm going to do that. Sometimes you got to place placement, pl pay pl placement penalties. If there is a penalty, like a, a, a coin number under the place you're placing something, you have to pay that penalty. But as it stands, that is all I have to do. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure I can get these actions and eventually we can unlock some more powerful actions. Two of them are unlocked at the beginning of the game, but we can unlock some more powerful actions down here that require a lot more wax seals. So, uh, yeah. Um, so now it's his turn. He is going to play a card and he is... He, he's not going to do the same action because there's a worker there. So he is going to take his A worker. Uh, oh, that's my A worker. He's going to take his A worker. And he is going to do the topmost available action he can with that worker, which is going to be this space here that he just unlocked. And he's going to get three stamps. Um, so he's going to take three stamps off his board and put them uh, you know I'm thinking that's what that does I'm 90% sure that's what that is that he is yeah he's doing three stamps and he's gonna put it basically where I don't have anybody um, so you get majority 
whoever has majority of stamps in a place, you're going to get a top thing. The second place player is going to get the bottom thing. So two player game, both players get something. Four player game, not everybody's getting something. More competition. All right, so that's his turn. And now it's my turn. <clears throat> Let's see, I've got a red and blue stamp that I have unlocked, but I kind of want another stamp. And I kind of like that blue one over there. I hate to use my purple. And I may want to use you know what? The green wouldn't be bad to use, but I hate for him to take a spot that would be easy for me to get something later because it would cost me more coins to get that later. I think I'm going to go ahead and use my purple guy here first and go here, and I'm going to pay two coins to get this blue stamp and increase my... So that's going to cost me actually three coins. Ooh. And if I get to do my next action that I want to do, I'll I'll still get to pull it off. So then we pull a card for uh, the AI here. And we want to use the A worker, but it's gone. So then we want to use the B worker. And we're going to take, he wants to take the journal action associated with B. Am I right? I think he just takes the next most powerful action. This is B worker that has, oh, I keep taking my worker. His B worker has, uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> uh, two red, so he's probably gonna wanna do that. And he has four coins, right? One, two, three. Four, so it'll just move off the board. So he can go there. And he has two red. He could go here and pay all four. He's capable of doing that. And then he gets, I think, at least one delivery. Two if he could pay a coin, but he won't be able to pay a coin. So he'll only be able to do one and I believe, oh, this is the one of those actions. I forget what we're supposed to do with this action. Wah, wah. Academy, the active player may purchase one wax seal from, oh. Oh, oh, okay, 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 never mind. I went there and I technically could not have gone there. I would have had to have gone here and paid more, which I couldn't have. So I'm actually going to put this wax seal back. I'll get my three coins back, and I will retake my turn. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and let him take this action. So we'll, um, you know, just do what we can. All right. So that that's what he get. Now he would have to pay three coins to go there because I'm already on that journal action. He didn't have three coins, so he couldn't go there to do that. So we're just going to give him his three coins back, and he's going to have to pick a different action. Um, I don't think he can afford that action. So I think he's going to end up having to use his C worker that has a green and go here and he will simply move uh, two spaces on this track. He'll go one, two, and he's going to grab this. Um, actually, I think, I think that just stays there. I don't think he grabs that. I think he just studies that. And so he has obtained knowledge of this particular fella on his board. I think that's how that works. Let's double check it um, because may move a single explorer along a corresponding island track up to the number of spots associated with the action being performed. Alright. 
Uh, except for the first, blah, blah, blah. And they immediately perform the indicated action shown on the location where the action stopped. On to the final, gains three additional victory points, blah, blah, blah. All right, research. These actions appear on specimen tokens that are placed on island and ocean tracks. The active player may place a research token onto the matching specimen token on their personal board. So that's what I did. I put a research token onto the matching specimen on my personal board. Okay. So I think if I get a museum token, a delivery token, then I can deliver a specimen and that gives me other things. That's how that works. Okay, gotcha. So we just, we just, re he researched a specimen after going two spaces. So now it is my turn and I'm actually going to take two turns because of my failed first turn. Um, that's a blue. I have to pay coins to go there. Well, that's as many workers as possible. So I could, in theory, go there. Um, I just realized I he could have done an action that I for, that I just didn't realize. So I'll have to give him that option later. Um, so I could go there. I'd have to pay three coins. And then I could take that, which actually wouldn't be too bad. Um, but that's going to cost me coins there. And there's no action there. So we actually can't go there. I'd have to pay three coins to go here. But that's pretty helpful. I just don't have, I just need coins. Um, and unfortunately, because he took that action, now it's more expensive to go. I really want free actions. A blue and a green. Man, it's tough. I'm going to go here. I'm just going to take one action that's pretty easy. And I'm going to move my boat uh, ahead. It's technically on this. I'm going to move it ahead. One, two. So at least I will catch up or be close to where the beagle will be. Uh, but I have to get all the way over to here um, in order to, or maybe it's here to put Explorer on the island. Maybe that's what I have to do. Uh, okay. So I did that, and then my second action, let's see, I've got a green. Now, one thing I keep forgetting is I have this special knowledge uh, or this knowledge token which can be used as any seal and so I think I'm going to use it as a blue seal and go here turn my knowledge token in so I'm using it I only have a green seal from that worker but I'm going to use it as a blue seal and I'm going to get a knowledge token back but more importantly I'm going to get three coins because I see that money is going to be tight. So we're going to do that. Oh my goodness. I can't pick these coins up. All right. So that gives me some more money. Nice. And then we're going to roll a card out here for him. He's not going to take that. There's a worker there. He is going to do this action, whatever that action is. Oh my goodness. It's like a symbol I don't recognize. I know he's moving this guy forward for one, two, three, four. So he's going to get an extra action um, anyway. But I got to see what the first thing is on his board here and what exactly that is triggering. That's the Firebrand expansion. That's way late. We're not going to mess with that. Ah, the worker. Okay. So it's going to be placed to the left, to the left. Special action tile to the left. What is the special action tile? I think it's these. But it's been a minute. Um, okay, it only goes to the special action diary if there are no other workers on the special action diary. This is the special action diary. Uh, but there are workers there, so he wouldn't go there, and he wouldn't go here. He actually 
won't end up doing this after all. I think he starts off off the board, not on the board. Um, <clears throat> so he'll take a rest action. And let's see what he does for the rest action because I needed to know that anyway. Uh, it's not there. Let's get the rest action. Come on now. Um, if you hear banging, that is my son with his friend. Just making lots of noise. They're playing with these blow up things. Uh, place the bottom most available worker onto any available hammock slot in the rest action area of Alfred's board. Okay, bottom most into any available rest action spot of Alfred's board. So what if we go there? I mean, why does it matter? Um, Alfred then gains seven coins and moves the bonus track worker two spaces to the right. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Um, so he's going to go uh, two spaces and gain... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so that's that. And then it is my turn with my last worker and my knowledge. And not a ton of options here that are going to be cheap. Um, I can pay. Let me double check. Thing. If I go to an action space that has my worker on it, do I still pay the three coins? Game overview, key concepts, activates, they perform the action. Okay. Okay. That's the first worker. One or more workers of any color, including the active players, then they have to pay three coins. Okay, it is three coins, right? Double check that too. Pretty 90% sure it's three coins. Uh, spent depends on player count. Always the same. Oh, so it's three coins for two players. It'd be two coins for three to four players, but it's going to be three coins for me. But as this is probably going to help me the most, I'm going to pay three coins to place my worker here. Um, and that is going to give me a wax seal. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the blue one that I wanted earlier and pay an extra coin to pop that down. There we go. Okay. That is all the actions. So now we do cleanup. Uh, and let's see if we have, oh, I was hoping there'd be an easy, there is a player aid. Um, I don't know. Uh, forgive my camera movement here. There's a player aid. Let's see. Game actions, distinct wind modifier, objectives, yada yada. Do we have just a cleanup phase? No. Man. I'm kind of shocked. There's a lot of bits and pieces and expansion material in this game, but there is no, uh, I don't see a cleanup <coughs> player aid, which would be very handy. Okay, cleanup phase. First, we move the HMS Beagle along the ocean track to the next Beagle Goal location. This is the HMS Beagle. He's going to move. You might be hard to see with my head in the way, but. It's, it's now even with my boat, because boats can share spaces there. <clears throat> All players return their workers back to their personal boards. So we're going to grab all of these workers, and we're going to put them back on the board. They would normally stand up pretty well next to the board, but because of the fact that I am filming overhead, I'm trying to make it so that uh, you all can see the camera pretty well. Um, I think I took the guy that's supposed to be there from the wrong space. So let's do that. Okay, done. Um, and then we remove all the remaining objectives from the main board. 
and draw two new silver and two new golden objectives and place them on their associated locations. Okay, so um, on the main board, right? Well, it's not, and it's not two. It's just one for multiplayer uh, because I remember doing this there. So we remove those from the board and draw uh, new ones. Put them out there. Yada yada. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, clean up these. All right. And then remove all wax seals on the topmost scroll. Shift all remaining wax seals until there are no wax seal locations above any wax seal uh, token. And then draw new wax seals and fill empty wax seal spots on the scrolls. Okay. So it says remove, but it doesn't say what to do with the removed ones. But we have one. I'm going to assume that after I refill these, then, I, then I'll just put that one back in the bag. Because it seems like there's a potentially limited number of wax seals in the game. I might just leave it out of the bag, actually, until I have gone through all the wax seals in this bag. And then I will do that. The wax seals are kind of cool. That's probably a Kickstarter thing. Um, because I believe there's a whole... Uh, bag of yeah wax seals over here so they're normally cardboard but they have like real wax seals that come with the game all right so that is round one that actually that was pretty fast uh, I got no victory points so uh, I mean either doing terribly or it's just it's a slow build all right so um these now for the solo I think I I think for cleanup I just do shuffle his cards back together perform the cleanup one new silver and one new gold objective blah 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 slide the bottom row of the two bonus cards oh yeah because now his action for bonus is the round two action they get a little more powerful as it goes on I see how it goes okay um, yeah. Okay, and that's it. That's it. So it doesn't say anything about his cards. Boo. Turn over face. It says nothing about his cards. Okay, it's got to be at the front. It's got to be at the front. Okay. It's got to have a thing for the deck. Um, Alfred's turn. Um, okay. Someone's that is a two player game on each turn, spends one work in the middle location. Draw an action card, perform one action. Um, hmm. Okay. Priority cost, color, academy, wax seal, correspondence, navigation, exploration, uh, campsite, deliver, and end of turn. Performs all actions. Their turn is over, and the player turn can elect their phase. Oh, it goes the first round. Reward phase. Alfred and player score correspondence envelopes in the same way that is described in the multiplayer section. Oh! But Alfred ignores this tile. Gains points equal to the value shown on the personal board multiplayer by the current round number. Okay, so you get points for the beagle. So three times the number of or times round, three times round, so he is in spot one, so I think he just gets three points. That'd be my guess. And he had the most envelopes here. Oh, so he would have gone two. So he would have gone three times two and gotten six. That's fair. Uh, I, on the other hand, have to look up what that scoring is. And I have to figure out how we work the envelopes because it's been a minute since I read that. Let's see. 
Uh, crew actions. Let's do end of round. Oh, the reward phase. Three envelopes. Give players to benefits. Blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, now perform all actions shown in the first section of the associated. There's a tile, and then all tied players can perform these actions. Okay. Score Beagle Goal Tile. Beagle Goal Tile directly below. Oh, is now scored. Each player indicates, gains the indicated number of victory points each time they meet the current goal's condition. Oh, the current goal's condition was to have three objectives. I didn't have that. So that one is going to be done, and I am not scoring that. He just scores victory points based on his distance with the beagle. Well, that was gain three victory points for each achieve objective. Okay. And if you're behind the beagle, then you'll lose points. But yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, he got that, and then he scores points for how far he is. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, seems harder than I thought uh, to keep up. But I did not see anything about his tiles here. So... Um, I'm going to assume that we just shuffle them all in and keep going. So we'll do round two. We'll at least do that far. All right, and he, he goes first. So we'll draw a card. And he is going to take his A worker. And he wants to take the most powerful action he can with think let's see topmost double check his rules for main direction shows a list of four descending letters corresponding now for its workers a priority order for selecting the worker to use for this action with the leftmost letter being the highest priority we'll attempt to play the highest priority worker that is available on their personal board if there's no legal way to do this he uses the next worker in priority order if no workers blah 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 Defined as in the top left and bottom middle sections of the board. Each main diary place has wax seal requirements. Okay. Alfred will always try to place the worker on the strongest location possible. It's based on owned wax seals, unlocked locations. So, uh, two is stronger, three and three. Okay, yeah. Temporary knowledge coachings as they can afford until they reach the wax seal. Okay. He just spends three for temporary knowledge to get what he can. So he could, in theory, spend one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He could spend quite a bit of temporary knowledge to get something. He could get these letters out. And I think, I think these disappear. Um, Maybe. I should double check that. Um, achieving objective. Three envelopes. Uh, in current order. Oh, perform an action maturity. Half their envelopes rounding up. Oh, okay. So they remove half their envelopes rounded up. So that's how that works. If you if you obtain something, if you obtain nothing, you don't have to worry about it. But all right. So what does he want to do? He's got two yellow, and he wants to take a main journal action. That's the deal. So the question is, what's going to be the most powerful one? So he'd probably use his two yellow. He wouldn't have to spend anything, but he'd go here and he would get one two, three stamps. All right. Um, yeah, he get those three stamps. And he's going to put them where he doesn't have a majority. 
So he was going to go there. All right. Man, I'm going to go pretty hard and fast after these wax seals because I feel like they are going to be pretty key. Um, kind of low on money. But a green wax seal. Now, I need three blue and two red there. Um, a green and a red, a yellow. I'm, just, I'm not going to have a place to really get that unless I use knowledge. So that one's kind of a, a kicker. Um, I think I'm going to use my purple one here. Well, actually, you know, this is not a bad action either because I just don't have the money for it. That's the problem. Yeah, I'm going to go with that action. I'm going to get myself a wax seal. I need a green. I like a free wax seal. I'm going to go get a second green. I'm going to do that. And then he's going to take an action and he's going to use his bottommost worker to go here. And he wants to unlock something for his topmost worker that they could do. And that's going to be that. And he's going to pay one, two, three, four coins because nobody's there that he'd have to pay coins for. And then I will go. Uh, that is pretty cool, but there's nothing there. I'd have to unlock it. And you know what I forgot is that when he unlocks that action, he actually gets to take the action for free, which I had forgotten about. Same with that one there. He would have gotten to uh, not deliver but gain a wax seal. Um, for free. When he gains wax seals, I think he tries to get the same color. So we're going to say he would have gotten that um, for placing that there. I think that's a fair assumption. And then for paying one more, he could have paid one and then done a second one uh, for one more coin and that would give him one two three uh, and I think four is the most he'll get in a spot of one color all right so he is doing good on that and I am struggling with funding not cool all right well I'm going to go help myself with some money here. I'm going to go, what do I need? A green. I'm going to take my guy who does green and go here. And I get to move, whoops, two spaces because I don't have anything. But I'm going to I'm gonna move one because here, if I go here, I get a knowledge. But here gives me four coins. So I'm just going to choose to stop uh, a space early and get that. And then he will get to go. So he's going to take his topmost worker. And he's going to go ahead and spend three, one, two, three, to take the action. And he's going to grab one of those and go there. And then he could pay another coin, but he doesn't have the money to do two coins. So he's going to have to stop there. Um, I just gave him a powerful action. I just did his third action. I just did it however I wanted. But I think that's what he would have done anyway. Because had I drawn a card, that was his... He would have skipped this one because there's a worker there. And then he would have done the most powerful action he could. Which I just had him do anyway. So I guess it's uh, not rocket science trying to figure it out. Now I could pay three and go there. And get another wax seal. Um, I need a red though, so it cost me three plus two. I've got a blue and I've got my yellow wax seal guy here, and the yellow is going to cost me something. Um, I've still got my knowledge 
token here, which is helpful. Now I could, well, actually I forget, I don't have that option. And he keeps taking that light, light bulb, placing those actions, it makes it tough. I need to accrue a decent amount of money to do much of anything. So I'm gonna go up here with that guy and we're just gonna go two spaces, one, um, can I build a camp? I could go one space and I could just build a camp which would give me an objective and three coins. Hmm. I think well, and I think either of these spaces can go. So I think I can still go to, still build a camp there. Um, and I think I get an objective. So I'll take a silver objective. Um, I have to get eight points and a feather. Um, so these kind of go off to the side until I fulfill them and then I can put them on my board but for now, they are going there. Um, and I get three coins, which is what I really need. So I'm going to do that. And then he's going to go. And he's not going there because he's already there. He wants to take the leftmost... Uh, What's he doing? Leftmost. Uh, he goes to oh special action. So he wants to go here. He's only got two green guys. So this is the journal action he wants to take, but he doesn't have the option to do it. So and he can't. So he's not going to do that. He's just going to do the rest action. That's going to give him two spaces. I'm going to give him that extra action because I forgot to do it. And one, two, three, four, five, seven coins. And then we're going to say he would have gotten to do that action before. So I'm going to give him a coin and give him uh, a green seal here. And uh, then that's going to be there. Normally it would have been two, but I'm giving him the one because that's when he would have gotten it, and I forgot to give it to him last turn. All right. Fun times. Last action with my yellow seal guy. I'm going to have to pay coins anyway I look at it. So I think I am going to do this and pay three coins plus uh, there's two, three, four, five, six, okay? And I'm gonna do what I think is gonna be a double up action. I'm gonna go here and I get to do, I get to place another one for, uh, whereas when you unlock an action, I paid for the action, but I can unlock another one but I don't have to pay for it and I can take the action. That gives me a purple, which is absolutely fantastic. Purple can be used for anything. I like that. Um, so, I think. be helpful though is to take something that actually gives my ship points <laughs> because that is going to be significant um, so we get a freebie there uh, I kind of like that three blue wax seals I'm so close to three blue wax seals um, I think this is the place to go for no cost and then I get to take that action I'm going to do four spaces. One, two. Um, I can go down here and get coins. Oh, that's only with a three player game. Uh, three. Ooh. Four. So if I 
go there, I can pay this last coin. I can place a tent out. So that's, got, that's what it costs. It gives me one point. And um, I get three, three tickets that I can use. Um, so I kind of like what I'm doing here. I'm not going to beat him in majorities in those other two, but I can at least go here and get a majority. It's nice. So I've got my point, I got my majority, and I get to put a explorer out on this first space right here because I got my ship to that, uh, well, I, I don't know, at some point, I think it's when you pass it. Maybe it's when you get on the board. Maybe it's when you pass this, you get it. But I'm way ahead there, which is fantastic. Um, great. So now we do our scoring. So the first thing I think we're going to do is we're going to look at these and we're going to see who's got majority. Well, I got majority, so I get two more ship movements. And I'm the first uh, to pass the silver. And I think, I want to say if you're the first to pass there, you get some stuff. Um, I am, I gotta double check that. Objectives, correspondence crew. Um, Actually, the it's the action I need to know. Mm. Let's see. Museum, deliver specimen, establish theory of evolution, and explore navigation. Uh, including can it be the same? It can be the same. When the player across the silver panel, the active player must place an explorer on trivial island. Uh, okay. So when I pass this this here, I went to a new island. When I pass that there, I get an explorer on a new island. I got it. Okay, cool. Um, uh, player picks up the Okay, got it. So that is that. Uh, so then we're scoring these VP points. Um, I kind of thought they had objectives, gain distinctions, gain actions, main board, beagle rolls, uh, score for each of your land adventure tokens. Oh my gosh. There's no uh, picture there to tell me what that tile really is. Um, board phase, engine cleanup. Oh, that's his, that's all that reaction. Gain four victory points for each of the player's wooden tents on the main board. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Um, okay, I don't know when that recording cut out. So if you saw the overhead, that's still there. But <laughs> I'm on round two kind of getting toward the end doing cleanup in round two and scoring and trying to figure that out. So I just found out that I get four points per tent I placed here. So that's going to give me eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and we're, we were doing these as well. So he gets one boat move. He's going to do that. Um, he's going to actually get uh, a different sort of uh, scoring because that boat's going to move there and then what else is he going to get he's going to get uh, he's got majority here and I got my majority so those are going to come off he is he's getting something so those come off and then here he's getting something he's going to get four coins one two three four and here he's going to get uh, what is that two coins normally a first player token but he just gets two coins so one two one two but he didn't get to there so he's not gonna he's not gonna take that action yet until he gets to the end all right so that's where he is he's got plenty of stuff and we're gonna take his 
his guys back to the board and do a round three. Uh, I'm going to grab my guys here and put them back here, and then it's going to be his turn. And I think, so the beagle moved. He didn't get all the way there, so he gets three times um, the number of those he's passed, so six. He gets six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we did all those majorities. So I think, I don't think I get anything else. We're just scoring these round goals um, for these things. All right, so if I have eight points, I get eight points? How's that work? Oh, it's the number of, uh, it's like deliveries, specimens I've delivered or something like that. I think that's what that is. All right, so he's gonna go first. And he's going to, of course, take this action, which he's been taking a billion times. Very annoying. Um, uh, and I think I used my temporary knowledge last time. I just forgot to put it out there. All right. So, yeah, he's going to use his bottom worker to go here. And he wants to get something that he can unlock for his top worker, which is this very powerful action here and that's going to give him four envelopes one two three and now he's going to get from these so he wants to try to get where he can get majority over me which he can do there and he uncovered now i forgot i was supposed to get two coins for myself down here because of my tent last time um he unlocked this which moves here. Uh, so he's going to get four points, one, two, three, four, because that's going to flip around. And he unlocked this max minus two. Um, I don't know what that means, and I don't care enough to look right now. He's going to get this action. We're in round three. Uh, so he's going to score four points. One, two, three, four. And then he will be off the board there. Um, wow. I was hoping to do something different. But I need um, more than I have. So, oh, the other thing I forgot to do for that round was shift these doodads up. All of them were gone from the top row, so all we have to do is draw from this bag here and put out uh, some more wax seals, which are apparently looking like all the same color for the most part, making green real rare. Hmm. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. Um, so let's go after another red would be good. Um, I could go to his, but I have to pay him a coin to go to his. But if I paid a coin, I could potentially get two, but then I have to pay coins to get that. So I think I'm just going to do, I'm just going to, I'm going to use my yellow here. Um, and, oh, why am I saying yellow? I have to use my red. Uh, I'm going to use the purple guy for my any guy. And I'm going to grab this red one, and I'm going to pay the coin I need to pay to put it in that space. And then he will go. And he wants to take a main journal action. He wants to use his A, which is four, four guys, and he can go there. It only takes three, and he can do four of these lovely letter things. So he is just going to go to the next spot. That makes sense to do. Um, no need, no reason to do something else. Uh, now I am going to do the action that I was hoping to do, which I'll get to do now because no one's in this journal action. I'm going to go there because I have two red and two blue, so I can take this action and it costs me nothing um, because that is I paid for the action. And now I get to place one of these without paying the cost of where I place it. And I get to do that action, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so 
I like this action, and that gives me. I could go three, one, two. Um, but there would be three. Actually, that would be four, to be honest. That would be four. Four spots. That's not bad. One, two, three, four. And that would give me a couple of boat movements. Um, plus a tent, which would give me another movement. So I am going to go, I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to get four movements. One, two, uh, three, four. So I'm going to land on this tent. Uh, I don't think the tent's not going to cost me anything to place. Um, and that's going to immediately give me two ship actions. One, two. And then I can get one more. I can move my explorer one more. Or I can get uh, another two ship actions. Well, uh, I like going here. I'm going to go one ship action because that gives me three coins and that gives me um, two knowledge. One, two, which is some kind of an in-game multiplier. And then he's going to draw a card and he wants to go to he wants to use his B worker to red and he has the coins for that and so he could spend one two three for his knowledge he has two red he will go there and he will um, well he wants to take the most powerful action he could take but red is the worker he would use so that is what he would do he'd go there and he's going to get a wax seal. Um, he'll get, he'll pay one to get this green one, which gives him one, two, three moves there. And then he will uh, pay another one to get a blue one and put that there. And then, um, yeah. And then. Uh, it's my turn. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, so I do I use my double green? My double green, awfully good, but I need another green to really do much of anything. Yeah, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to get uh, two, two travels. But you know what? I'm just going to go one and get five coins because money's tight. And I need to generate some money. And then he's going to go. He wants to make a delivery. He can deliver the specimen here. And he's going to put that there. Uh, and then he's going to get all the things he can get in the row and column. So uh, let's see. Two three knowledge, it doesn't count itself, doesn't count itself, so two knowledge and three coins, one, two, three, that's what he's getting, oh, four coins, sorry, yeah, because you deliver and then you get those things, and so uh, he got that, and he was the first to get this one, so we'll take that coin off the board and give him another coin, and then I get to go with my little yellow worker, I'd have to pay three coins to go there. I don't have a lot of options, but I really don't want to do the envelope thing because it's not very valuable to me. So I'm going to go to the first player token. I don't get to be first player, but I get three coins. And that would be largely the end of round one. Now, the first thing we do is we look at these majorities, eight points for every, well, he doesn't score those. Uh, the first thing he's going to do is look at his majorities, which is these guys. He's definitely got the majority there, so he's going to go one, two, and the beagle would have moved here for round four. And so he'd get there, um, and that's going to give him uh, three times. Uh, that is nine. One, two, three, four. Whoops. Wrong one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and then he's going to get 
uh, four coins. Um, so that would be one, two, three, four. And then he would get two coins. So one, two. And he's also going to get to walk two actions forward. Uh, he's going to get this guy. And he's going to go one, two. And instead of taking objectives, he gets uh, he gets to move three. Um, so he won't take an objective. He'll just go. He'll get four points. One, two, three, four. And here, and go three. Uh, two, three, and then he is going to get to take that action of five victory points. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, might have been four because it was the end of round three, so one less point. Ugh. Well, there you go. That is three rounds of Darwin's journey, and. It's uh, what do, what do I think? Final, I'm, I'm gonna say final thoughts. I haven't quite finished the game, but I kind of see where it's going. Uh, solo wise, I'm gonna say nice solo design. It's easy to run. It's actually a pretty quick game. I think knowing once I got the iconography all down and everything, I feel like it's a pretty um, doable game very very quick to play it's 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 a lot of setup for a fairly quick play like an hour long play and with the action placement and the tight money it it does seem i don't know it's not thematically engaging enough for me to feel like I'd want to get to this table as a solo very often. Um, the wax seals are kind of neat and it's interesting to build up those, uh, try to get your worker built up so you can take the more powerful actions. But I mean, ultimately it's called Darwin's journey and you're tr trying to discover specimens. And in order to keep up with the AI, I'm not really like, I want to get the specimens. Part of me wants to get those, but it's only if it's convenient to not just completely bail out on points um, and I and so it's it's it doesn't really drive me toward the theme with the mechanics so uh, solo wise okay I would play it as a multiplayer game I think this would be uh, a good multiplayer game to play and I, I kind of wouldn't mind um, I don't know. Like I play it. I definitely play it as a multiplayer game. It's it's fun enough, and I like it better than other drier Euro games. Uh, this one is not quite as dry as some that I have played. Uh, so like one that comes to mind is like Teletum. Teletum is a seems to me like a very dry Euro game, and this is a little bit more thematic and colorful than that um, <clears throat> so I probably there's a chance I'd choose choose to play this over a game like to let them but it could go either way you know I might want to play one one day one one day and one another day uh, so that that's not like a, a hard and fast like I'd always play this over to let them or something like that but uh, it's just the point is it's a little bit more slightly more engaging it's a little more stuff going on reminds me a little bit of like Maracaibo with the Explorer track on the bottom except there's a lot less narrative with this game and it's more about the action selections and trying to unlock new actions and so that that is kind of an interesting mechanism the lens mechanism where you're unlocking another action and other players have to pay you if you unlock that action um, I'm not sure how much priority would really drive uh, like is this like is it kind of like a race game where once you kind of get in the lead it's really hard easier to stay ahead um, and harder for people to catch up I don't see a lot of catch-up mechanism in here um, so it 
could be like a once somebody's gotten an edge they can run away with it but i don't know that for sure i'm just saying that arbitrarily just kind of looking at this game uh with very young darwin's journey eyes uh it is uh not a game that i will purchase it's not uh it's definitely not going to be on my go pursue this game because i don't I don't think I can get my family to play this game. That's not the end all be all. There's lots of games I have I can't get my family to play, but it's not um, engaging enough for me to really want to pull it off the shelf. It doesn't seem like it's gonna force the issue of, hey, I really wanna get to this table. And that's a lot of times these days when I'm purchasing a game, that's a little bit of the question I'm asking myself is how much is this game going to push to get off the shel shelf unless it has a very unique mechanism that I just know once in a while I'm going to want to get in play because it because of that particular unique mechanism. Uh, this game in itself did not have any mechanisms that were unique enough to say, oh, I really want to get this game because it has X, Y, or Z mechanism that's really cool. Um, it's got some neat mechanisms. Uh, and it's got some originality to it, but it is not original enough overall uh, that I'm just wanting to, you know, go get this to the table a whole lot. And I think a lot of it is that thematically it's just kind of like, eh, it's okay. Uh, I like the idea of the Jarwin's Journey thematically. I don't feel like it played out in the game much, and that's where uh, is a little bit of a miss probably in the design, but I don't know exactly where I would adjust this design to meet that particular, uh, you know, what I would say is a little bit of a, a downside of this. But there you go. If you have played Darwin's Journey, and I'm sure I made some mistakes here, so if you saw me make mistakes, then, you know, by all means, point out what I could have done uh, differently or should have done differently. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I didn't finish the game, so I will argue that there is an aspect of maybe if I finished the game, I'd see a little something, but I played enough of it, and I felt like I got enough, I would, I already know I'd prefer to play this game with multiple players, more so than a solo experience. Um, I can just tell it's not... It's it's not the kind of game. It's the kind of game I would say. You know, that's good that they made a solo. That's neat, but it didn't need a solo. That was just. I understand that in today's market, if you don't have a solo option for your game, a lot of times people will just bail on it because everybody wants a solo, even if they never play it. Um, but uh, this one didn't need one. It's probably, you know, it's 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 a multiplayer game. And, and the design is for that. And it's got tons of expansions in here. I didn't look through all the rules for expansions to see what all they do. But uh, it's got some room to, to grow and to be uh, more game than what I had out here because I just went with the base. Um, but at the same time, a lot of times, I really want the base game to be compelling enough for for me to feel like it's worth going out and you know having the expansions or in this case just reading the extra rules to set up the expansions um, you know it this one didn't drive me to really want to know what that is so I probably say I would probably rank this like a, I'll probably rate it around somewhere in the ballpark of a six or seven um, I'd play it if someone wanted to play it I probably wouldn't suggest it uh, but uh, I might at like something like BGG Con if I'm like, well, what's a game I can get out and I can teach relatively quickly? I don't think the teach on this one is real hard, and I don't think the play is super long. Now with four players, it's obviously going to be probably you're probably looking at 90 minutes with four players, depending on AP and, and player turns. But uh, you know, I bet you could set up and play this entire game with four players in like two hours. Now with a teach probably a little more than that but at 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 a something like BGG con I it, like that's not too bad you know getting 
getting a whole game set up, played, and taught in three hours is is pretty good for when you're learning a lot of new games. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, thanks for watching. If you are new to Darwin's Journey, um, uh, let me know what you thought of it and. If uh, I'm, I apologize, I don't know where the video is going to be cutting in and out. There's probably going to be some some dead space, and uh, most likely it'll be just a skip section where I'll just you'll just see me come back after wherever this video cut out. I didn't realize my uh, uh, laptop hard drive was that full, so I'll have to move some stuff around on it. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining on our game thoughts. Until next time. Have a great week.